Hello community, so great that you are back. Today we talk about can DI simulate your particular future if you want to become a bioarchitect, a quantum specialist or a neural interface designer. So let's start the video and we have an AI simulating your individual life path that you simply talk to your future self. Welcome to my channel Discover AI. We have a look at the latest AI research paper. Everybody's talking about an AI bubble, so let's enter the bubble, let's find a nice subspace, cozy, warm, and let's do something that makes sense. We will use AI to project particular patterns that it learned from social media, and we want to see if our personal life path, our future, if AI can help us to make here the right choices. We have a beautiful new study. December 5th, 2025, MIT Media Lab, Stanford University, Singapore University of California, Thailand. And they talk about simulating here life paths with AI digital twins. So AI generated future selves of individual persons, can they influence their own decision making and expand the human choices? Absolutely fascinating. Here we have an AI as a pattern recognition and pattern matching machine. This makes sense to look at. So let's have a look. Your future self or my future self. Imagine you are 18 years old. You have to decide. Do I go to law school? Prestige, grueling working hours or a non-profit? Path of passion but financial instability. Now, psychology is called the human attempt to predict how this future will emerge and they have, we have a problem, and it is called an episodic future thinking. And the problem simply is, we are terrible in doing this. So can AI help? 192 young people had to upload their real pending life decisions that they were currently struggling with, like, should I break up with my partner? Or should I move to New York for a new job? And they were sitting really in front of a computer screen. We had an AI machine understanding their life choices up until now and projecting it into the future given that they have an option a and an option b how would they imagine their future and they could talk in real time to the ci and ask whatever they wanted about their own future 192 people did this test the topics were simple education what are my career choices do I have to move? Do I have to leave my geographic uh, environment? Where should I go to? Where is the best place to have an education, a career? And then you see, not really of importance, housing, relationship, family, health, wellness, financial, lifestyle. So we have more or less just three groupings. The education, continue study or enter the workforce. So they take a gap year, PhD in academia or move to industry. Then career, passion versus stability, loyalty versus risk, start your own business versus corporate ladder, and geographic reallocations. So the conversations of those people was really interesting for the psychologist who did this experiment. Now, we of course are interested, hey, how they did this, how they built this technical avatar, so short implementation. They used Claude Sonnet 4.5, and what Sonnet did, Sonnet generated here future memories. Sonnet has, let's say, a copy of the internet. So if you look for a particular job profile here, a professional career, Sonnet knows about here what is the typical day in the life of those persons. So it was ideal for generating these future memories. So it took in the participant life story data, the first 18 years, and hallucinated, yeah, because it could not do anything else, detailed, coherent autobiographical memories from the perspective of a 55-year-old, strictly adhering here to the three-dimensional appeal structure that it was programmed on, evaluative, effective, and eudaimonic. And we're going to talk about these three terms in about five minutes' time. And then the people really had real-time conversation with their future self. It was like a Zoom call, and you had really saw it here, a real-life discussion. But it only, not only generated here a future memory for the option A and B, but Claude Sonnet came up with a novel alternative, an option C, and this is where the story really got interesting. Of course, 
the synthesis and the animation of the face, yeah, visual avatar, you had one model for aging and one for animation. Google Nano Banana, of course, was the age progression model. And for the neural animation, live portrait, and for the voice integration into this animation, they used the 11 Labs voice model version 2. Now, from a psychological point of view, it was interesting that the humans seem to have a user-defined binary decision in front of them. Now, option A, this is what the primary path the user was considering. Interesting, more or less, it was just the status quo. Then there was the option B. This was the alternative path, the radical path, or maybe what they were really looking for, but not really dare to take here the risk, whatever. The AI generated here future memory specific to A and B, and internally it also created an option C. This is the AI generated novelty of a future of this particular person that the person was not thinking about. So if you want Sonnet invented this option, but analyzing here the user values and finding a semantic intersection based on option A and B. Now the algorithm was simple. Yeah? Imagine analyze the option A would be medicine and option B would be engineering. And then we have the synthesis. The AI generates a third path that combines simply A and B. So let's say if you wanted to be in medicine and also in engineering, but you also love teaching, great, you become a bioengineering professor. Expanding human choices, this is an interesting topic for an AI system. Is an AI able to expand the human choices? Now, in cognitive science, we know that humans suffer from what is called the bounded rationality. Humans can only imagine here a few options at a time, no? usually A, B, maximum C. By generating now a novel option, the AI did not just help the user pick one of the preference solutions, but also to innovate their own life paths. And you know what the shocking result was? Users that were shown option C choose it in 20% of the time. The control group who was also doing this but without sitting in front of a computer screen only did this in 2.27%. The people came up with a third option. So you could see the eye effectively broke here the binary thinking pattern of humans that only go, yeah, I have option A and B. There's nothing else in the world. And the eye having here all the knowledge of the internet, just showed them, hey, there are a thousand further options if you have your personal values or things that you like, what I can invent. But since this was an um, experiment here, real psychological measurements were taken, broken down by specific metrics. So let's have a look at the first. The first is a decisional conflict scale. So this simply measures how uncertain a person feels in general. Especially, do I feel sure about my choices for my future career path? Do I know all the pros and cons? Simple, no? I give you the result. The participants who spoke to the option B avatar, so the path they were less likely to take initially, saw a statistically significant drop in, in the decisional conflict. And I would say, yeah, this makes sense, no? So, talking now to the person who had the road not taken, or the road taken, significantly reduced here the anxiety. It acted here as a simulation stress test. And by seeing now the alternative in front of them on this computer screen real vividly, the user, the human realized, oh, that's actually not so bad option B, or, wow, definitely, I do not want to do option B. So whatever their feeling was, it solidified the clarity. The sense of agency, this is interesting. And this is simple, no? A person feel that they are in control of their actions. This is a typical statement when you hear, I am the author of my life, versus you feel controlled by the external forces and you just say, well, life just happens to me. Now, the result was that the agency significantly decreased after talking to the eye. And this was, if you want, the most counterintuitive finding, no? Because you might think people who are easily persuaded with a low agency would change their mind rather frequently. Well, the opposite is what really happened. People who feel in control are more confident to change their minds when really presented with new data. So they viewed the AI avatar as a tool to update their strategy, to explore, to probe their strategy, whereas the low agency people stuck just to their original safe choices. More of the same. So this debunks the fear that AI is just manipulative to weak-minded user. Now it turns out 
that it was the strong-minded humans who used the eye to pivot here their life choices. Interesting. Future self-continuity. Simpler. The question is, hey, this future you that you see on the monitor, is it a stranger? Does it feel strange? Or do you feel, yeah, this is me, this is you? So, the result? Everyone's score went up for future self-continuity. Everybody felt, yes. And even the control group who just did uh, a guided mental imagination without AI saw a big benefit in emotional connection as the people who saw here the high-tech avatars. So this means for feeling connected to your own future, AI isn't strictly necessary because your brain is powerful enough, which is just as amazing. So you can do all of this experiment at home. You don't need a voice simulation and hear face recognition and everything. Just type on your keyboard, talk to your AI, but careful. You're just playing here with somebody and I will talk about the risk in a moment. So what was the summary here of all the psychological um, elements here and what was the, the delta? What was the difference nobody expected? We have three facts. The first one is the evaluative vividness then the demonic vividness, and the visual realism. Now, interestingly, the evaluative vividness, rated 5.8 out of 7, the users valid the AI most for giving logical facts, provide facts for their decision. Second, the demonic vividness, rated 5.7 out of 7, they valued the meaning of the answers. The user responded then with sentences like, I feel fulfilled. Interestingly, the visual re realism was not as important. So they value the shiny graphics here less this AI avatar, less than the logic and the meaning that was provided in the answers. And if you don't know old Greek, stemming here from the Greek eudaimonia, this good spirit, it's about flourishing here by acting authentically, developing your character, contributing to something larger than yourself, a concept that is central to Aristoteles' philosophy. So, therefore, AI being here a specific mirror that allowed here the high agency people to confidently change their life plans because they regard AI as a machine, as a tool, as a sparring, intellectual sparring partner, and they can learn here from the general knowledge, not AGI, no super intelligence, just, hey, Claude knows here more or less all the social media BS and can give you a clear reflection how is the typical day in the life of a financial trader or whatsoever. So it can provide further insights. And by generating the option CDI didn't just help the user to pick A or B. It helped the user to, let's call it, innovate here their own life paths into the future because it is not black or white. It is always, you have a spectrum of possibilities. You just have to think about it. Now, I cannot end this video without talking about risks and hidden traps. Have a look at the paper, it's highly recommended. The CI exposes here mechanisms for a high efficiency manipulation of any human being on this planet. And the authors acknowledged this also and they said, yeah, but of course, acknowledging is one thing, but the danger remains. So imagine now we have a bad act, you know, they could use this to suppress here different features or different behavior in human beings. Let's say you have a vote somewhere in the US, maybe, and your future you says that voting really doesn't matter if you talk to your AI system from a particular global corporation that is located in the US. Or you talk to your AI avatar that wants to sell you some products because the global corporation who created this avatar says, you know what, the future you loves this insurance plan from this particular global corporation. And you immediately understand what we are talking about. This single-sided persuasion effect here is a major red flag for any deployment. Yeah? But also think about it. AI systems have an inherent bias because every global AI company wants that you interact with them all, that you stay online, that they can offer you some options, they can sell you something, whatever. You use more tokens, yeah, you get the idea. So this Claude model is statistically unlikely to generate here a future self that really shows you the truth. That there are options where you can be, if you do some bad choices or bad decisions, 
you can end up depressed, maybe divorced, or even unemployed. And even if the option B is, hey, move to LA to become an actor with no savings, well, you know this has a high probability of failure, so be careful. Now, what is the scientific consequence? Those systems likely suffer from an optimism bias, a massive optimism bias. Everything is just beautiful. Everything is just gorgeous. Everything is just going to work out. Those are not realistic AI systems because they have been pre-trained on a particular bias to keep you engaged and to keep you dependent on the AI interactions. Therefore, those LLMs function less as a realistic simulator of risks and more as a generator of the best sunshine case scenarios. No? And this could dangerously embolden users to take risk by presenting here what we call a sanitized version of all of the consequences. So, careful if you use this. And then, of course, we have asymmetric influence, and I love it. And I just have to tell you one sentence. Our brain thinks, hey, look, it's me in the mirror, in the monitor. So I can trust me, I mean you, I mean the machine. So you see exactly what the AI companies are playing here with. No? Scientific consequence, if the underlying AI cloud system has any bias, or you go to X, maybe there's a political bias in this AI machine, no? or there's a corporate bias to buy and sell here specific products. No? The delivery mechanisms, like suddenly you have a digital twin right next on your phone, all the day time here right next to your side, makes this bias incredible, potent, and manipulative. And you know what? It's a nudge weaponized with your identity. But of course, there's also the semantic intersection fallacy. Ne? Now, this is easy. Ne? Uh, Claude tells you, okay, you want to go in medicine or you want to go in engineering. So what is the middle ground? The middle ground is bioengineering. Now, you know, in real life, the best alternatives are often orthogonal to this. It is not just taking the average here of two vectors. The system, the IRF system relies on a linear interpolation of concept, assumes that a compromise between two choices is the optimal third choice. But this is an inherent limitation of how LLMs structure the semantic space. So, you know, if you're not presented with orthogonal solution, eh? You know, this is a bias because your LLM has massive limitation. And one of these limitations is that the LLM structures the semantic space in a simplified way and does not give you the best alternatives that there are. And of course, we have to talk about demographics. And if you want to generalize those psychological results I just presented to you from the study to maybe a non-Western population, or even to me sitting here in Europe, this is scientifically absolute unsafe without any cross-cultural validation. Because maybe your culture will value different job opportunities or different future life paths in your particular society. And just to remind you, yes, it's great that we have this new uh, preprint here, this new experiment done in the US, but just look how tiny the US is compared to the complete globe, to the total addressable market that the AI companies want to sell you their AI products. So careful. It shows you here a beautiful new, let's say, application to help you project your future life decision, your future life paths. But be remember, this is here really here for a local environment here, from a local system. Maybe we in Europe, hopefully we will have also a European system or in India, you might have a, a, an Indian LLM or, I don't know, China already has some beautiful LLMs and vision language model. And I know that a lot of other states are working on their own LLM and AI machines that take care about their culture, about their language, about their industry, about their job possibilities and their professional life paths for the young people. So... I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a little bit of fun, some new information maybe. Hey, why not subscribe, maybe become a member of my channel. And I hope to see you in my next video.